and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Tommy Doyle's Smashed Pumpkin <laughs> Ale. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> boogeyman, boogeyman. Today we are doing another Patreon request. It is 1987's Prom Night 2, Hello Mary Lou. <laughs> this one was requested by Stephen Bay. It was directed by Bruce Pittman. This movie stars Canadian acting legend Michael Ironside. <laughs> he was in Visiting Hours, which we covered. <laughs> and he's also in uh, Minefield. <laughs> <laughs> which I found on VHS at a Value Village a couple of weeks ago. It's a good find. Wendy Lyon is also in this, and she is a Canadian television mainstay. 80s Anne of Green Gables show. The wholesome Canadian show, right. then she shows up in this movie naked and killing people. Yeah, and Jesus. Louis Ferreira is also in this, and he's in a, quite a few horror movies. He's in Saw 4, 5, and 3D, as well as the Dawn of the Dead remake. The movie starts out in 1957, and uh, Mary Lou is in the confessional, and she's confessing to the priest, disobeying her mother which is a no-no. Numerous relations with boys, right? And loved every minute of it. And then she just leaves the confessional. <laughs> we then see at the prom, she's with Billy Nordham. She goes and tells uh, Billy to go get some punch. And when he comes back, she's gone. And so he goes looking for her behind the stage, making out to some other fucking guy. Drinking some flask? <laughs> yeah. We've been going out for a year, and we never even made it close to this far. Billy goes to the bathroom. He's all old. He's like 50. <laughs> His hair's all thinning and everything, and he's supposed to be hey. like 17. <laughs> yeah. There's kids in the bathroom pull a prank, right? They've got this... It's like a stink bomb. The principal comes in and the, the kids ditch the, the bomb in the garbage. And so Billy kind of sees it and he gets an idea. And he goes up to like the catwalk above the stage. Mary Lou gets called on stage because she's the prom queen. Billy lights the fuse, throw the stink bomb down. The sparks from the fuse light her dress on fire. Must have been some cheap ass dress because that <laughs> thing goes up like that. <laughs> And as she's burning and dying, she kind of looks up at him and sees who it was, yeah. right? Nothing happens to Billy for pulling this prank. <laughs> for burning a woman alive. <laughs> 30 years later, Billy is now the principal of the school. We also get introduced to a new character, Vicky Carpenter. Very wholesome girl. So Vicky needs a dress. She goes to the prop department at school. There's this big trunk sitting there and she opens it up. Dress, the sash and a tiara. She ends up taking everything to art class and that's where she leaves everything for the night. Vicky's friend Jess in the arts room overnight finds the sash and the tiara. All hell breaks loose, all this shit goes flying everywhere and there's one of those slicers. <laughs> this paper cutter. <laughs> yeah, teasing you, right? Gets uh, thrown up over a beam and hung. And then she gets thrown out a window, <laughs> too, yeah, no it's less. A boot. <laughs> yeah. Everyone believes this to be a suicide because Jess just found out she was pregnant and distraught because her friend just committed suicide, or so she thinks. Starts having all these weird visions and hallucinations. Like she's got this rocking horse <laughs> thing and it starts like looking at her and her blankets come all super tight across her body and you can see these hands start to grope her and everything. Grabs the radio and throws it at that rocking horse. Vicky's super religious mom makes her go to confessional one day she mentions Mary Lou this kind of sparked something in the priest and we find out that this priest was the boy from 1957 that was making out with Mary Lou backstage he grabs his Bible or whatnot and goes to Billy's house wants some scotch <laughs> telling the principal well, the spirit of Mary Lou has come back she's out to get us now Vicky's starting to act very strange this girl starts making fun of her in class and Vicky actually sees that it's Mary Lou making fun of her mm -hmm. Slaps her and then oh, it's not Mary Lou. It's just this other kid. And so she's <laughs> got to go to detention now Seeing on the chalkboard help me being written backwards and she goes up to the chalkboard to get a closer look and These arms pull her into the chalkboard when she comes out. She's like a different person She's now fully possessed by Mary Lou So she goes to confessional and the priest starts realizing this isn't Vicky. This is Mary Lou talking to me Yeah she busts through the confessional booth and stabs him in the mouth of the cross. There is no heaven. And worst thing of all, no fucking wings. <laughs> 
Billy has to convince himself that Mary Lou isn't back from the grave. He goes to her grave and digs it up. Yeah. Opens a casket. And the priest is in there with that cross in yeah, his mouth. Yeah, that's a pretty good scene. Vicky is approached by her friend in the girls' change room. Concern, you're acting different, you're dressing different, you're not yourself. And Vicky comes up to her in the showers to kind of apologize, and she starts coming on to her. <laughs> right. Very strange. So she runs away, and they're both naked. It's not too often you see the killer naked in a mm. movie chasing after. It's usually the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Her friend hides in one of the lockers and she kind of zeroes in on one and you think she's going to open it, but no, she just boom, <laughs> crushed by all the other lockers and you see the blood come out. Prom night, she's getting ready for the prom. She's got her dress on and she's acting all strange. She's on that rocking horse, <laughs> kind of petting it and everything and it's all, the Look, horse is even more animated. Yeah, it's all looking around and everything, <laughs> fucking weird. Her dad comes in, wish her good luck for prom night, and she starts making out with her dad, and the dad isn't like pushing her yeah, away, and he's all in the it goes <laughs> along <laughs> with it. The mom comes in, like, oh, you harlot, and starts giving Vicky shit. What about him? Yeah, what about Fuck. him? He didn't push her away or anything. You better go confess right now, go and confess. Mother goes flying through the front door. Then Mary Lou walks out of the house and is on her way to the prom night. And that's where we're going to end the plot point. So finish watching Prom Night 2 to find out what happens. So this movie didn't start out as Prom Night 2, Hello Mary Lou, right? It started out as something completely different. It was originally the haunting of Hamilton High. As soon as the execs got a hold of it just before it was ready to be released, they wanted to attach it to the Prom Night Saga. A sequel, and people have already seen the original, more chance to go see it yeah. than something just, you know, completely new. The Haunting of Hamilton High sounds very generic. Yeah, it doesn't well. sound as intriguing as Prom Night 2. Hello, Hello Mary, Mary Lou. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, ooh. It I just seems to work. Like. So it's just kind of like a different story that takes place in and around the Prom Night. The movie did suffer, though, from budget issues, right? Yeah. And it didn't really make that much money. Another great thing about the movie is the effects. Yeah. And that's probably why the budget was so high, because the effects are so good. That and Michael Ironside's pay was probably <laughs> most of the budget. Out of the 2.5 million, he's like, I'll take 2.4 million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't really leave us that much, Michael. I don't care. The effects are great, and they're done by Jim Doyle. And he also worked on Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. And you can kind of see the parallel. Like, a lot of the effects are kind of similar. Have a similar vibe, that dreamy type vibe. You That's know? right, yeah. Like yeah. coming through the chalkboard. Yep. Oh, it yeah. Looks something exactly like you'd see in Nightmare on Elm Street. Even like the horse, you know, that that, that mm. horse, when you start seeing the horse come alive, like it looks really good. Yeah. It's got red glowing eyes, too, yeah. and its little tongue is all sticking out. It looks scary. When Mary Lou starts to be reborn at the end of the movie, again, that's a great sequence, and the effects are really good. The kills in this movie are great. Teasing with the with that cutter. Yeah, I like the tease. Even though they don't use it, it's a little disappointing, but the tease is fun. You yeah, know, exactly. They expect them to go that route, and they don't. But the locker scene is great. The effects for that are pretty cool. And again, the lead-up to it's really <clears> good, <throat> too, because you don't expect that. Mm. <laughs> When would you expect the lockers to kind of implode on themselves? <laughs> you expect her to open up the locker and do something to her, right? Stab but, her or something. But no, it just looks at the locker and boom! Yeah. And how they did that, who knows? Again, but great practical effects. Exactly. The kills in this movie don't lend themselves to a typical slasher, because that's not what this movie is. Tease you that it's maybe there's going to be slasher type kills. And there still there aren't. Right, It's yes. all supernatural kills. Which is great. It's a nice twist on it. Yeah. Humor in this movie is, is really good. It's all in the dialogue and, right. and the delivery, right? Yeah. Which seems very natural for the characters. Girl complaining that she doesn't have a date yeah. for prom night. <laughs> and then the guy behind her, can I talk to you after class? <laughs> Get lost, asshole. The one girl wants to be prom queen and she tries to convince the computer nerd to yeah. change the votes to make sure she <laughs> wins. And well, he's got a price. And yeah, the yeah. price is a little bit of action. <laughs> she goes back to her boyfriend after going down on this guy. He's all, <laughs> he's all kissing her. Yeah. He's all like, mm, where'd you get those mints yeah, from? Yeah. I didn't feel like it looked Canadian. I felt it did. Because the effects were so good. 
Yeah. See, I kind of forgot that it was Canadian until they open up that fridge and see all the <laughs> Labatt Blue beer in there. Like, oh yeah, it's Canadian. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's yeah. tons yeah. too, and it's all the old style bottles. Yeah, the eighties bottles. Yeah. But I thought the production level of this was top notch. It was pretty good. It looks really good. The effects are great. Acting's good. There wasn't like any performances that stood out as being like, ooh. The directing I thought was really good and there's yeah. a lot of cool shots. The door opens and there's all that light. Yeah. And then Mary Lou is standing in front of it, you know, and you like that's just a cool. Silhouette. Yeah, like that's neat. And then suddenly she's in front of the guy, like just like in a split second. Yeah. And the pacing is good too. Like it yeah. kind of starts off a little slow, but then once you get to when she shows up at the prom and you know shit's gonna hit the fan. And that ending is great, like Michael Ironside's up on the catwalk again, and you think it's going to kind of mirror the beginning a little bit, past going to relive itself, and it kind of goes in a different direction. Yeah. But it's just complete havoc. The lights blowing up, yeah, and fuck. neon lights falling and killing people. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's like Carrie on steroids. Yeah. Breath of fresh air, because you're expecting a slasher type movie like the first one and it's right. not you know like you said it's a supernatural slasher yeah and it's it's just kind of a slow burn and it's tons of fun it looks good effects are good good acting so we can't knock it we definitely recommend it and until next time keep drinking